Hello, this is Will from Stacks for Stacks and today I'm going to give you a guided tour of the new player stack for Rapid Weaver. This is a new stack element I've been working on over the last couple of months. It's basically a custom HTML5 audio and video player merged into one single stack. The basic idea of this new stack is that it will give you a very feature rich and highly customizable audio or video player which you can easily set up in a Rapid Weaver website. It's designed primarily for self-hosted audio or video files. In other words, audio or video which you're hosting on your own web server or with a file sharing service such as Amazon S3. Um, so with this in mind, there's no actual interactions with outside services such as YouTube, SoundCloud, Vimeo or any services like that. Now I'm not going to sit here and say that Player is a replacement for services such as YouTube. Personally, I love using YouTube, I use it all the time. And the chance of this video you're watching now is actually being broadcast via YouTube simply because I needed to get this video embedded into multiple websites, public forums and some email newsletters and such like. But certainly if you are a professional and you're doing quite a lot on your website with audio or video files, you really do want to be giving your users the best possible experience. With this stack you can fully customise the appearance and behaviour of your audio or video files. You can give users a, a very nice interactive experience, engage them with your website and build a, a custom media player which actually looks part of your website rather than something that was added in later on. Player I've coded completely myself. There's no dependencies on other plugins, scripts, source code, anything like that. Every line of code that's gone into the player stack I've written myself. I've not simply ripped code from other players, you know, other media players. And So the key advantage of building with player is you've got a very strong, dependable solution for Rapid Weaver to get your audio or video files playing. Excellent cross-browser compatibility. And because this is very much a stack I've developed entirely myself, we've got the scope then to further enhance it in future with new features, changes to how some of the things might work. This is the website in front of me right now for the player stack. The address is stacksforstacks.com forward slash player. On this webpage you can read all about the new player stack. There is a free demo version you can download and I'd strongly suggest that you do download that and try the player stack before committing to a purchase just so you can make sure you know what you're getting. There's a lot of information on the website here about all the key features, why you should consider using the player stack and I've also prepared quite a number of different examples starting with audio files here and we've also got quite a lot of video files, lots of different examples you can click and play and uh, experiment with. Player Stack is fully responsive as well, so it works great across a whole range of different devices and computer screen sizes. And also on this page you'll find all the setup details, a lot of useful information about preparing your audio or video files. Again, we've got a chapter here about the mobile and tablet support and uh, various other functions of this new stack. It's certainly a very, uh, like I say, a very feature-rich stack. There's a lot it can do. Um, the player control bar is fully customizable with HTML code and we've also got support for things like captions and subtitles. So there's a huge amount that this stack element can do. It's a very exciting solution for Rapid Weaver users seeking to embed audio video files within a website. So without further ado, what I'm going to do now is flip over to Rapid Weaver and we'll get a basic player stack set up and working within a couple of minutes. Okay then, so what I've done is I've just switched over into Rapid Weaver. I've created a brand new project file called Player. I've applied my black and white Rapid Weaver theme to this project and I've just gone ahead and added a new Stacks page. I'm using Stacks version 2.5 and the page is just called Player. What you'll want to do is to open your Stacks library, search for the Player stack and just drag and drop a copy of Player into the page like so. By default this is what you'll see on the page, so we've got the sort of player stack itself located in the middle here and on the right hand side on this side we've got all the controls for the player, various settings and options you can change to customise the player. So it works very much like any other normal stack element. Just to give you a quick run through of some of the settings, 
Firstly, we've got a player ID. This is a very useful setting in that it means you can give every player stack in your website a unique ID. This is very useful later on if you're setting up custom controls elsewhere in a page, or if you want to create a link so that when somebody clicks the link, they'll be taken to this web page, and the page will scroll down to this particular point where the audio or video stack is located. We can toggle very easily between either a video, which is the default, or an audio file. And when we do so, the stack asks us for the link to the different file formats for either the audio or video file. The aspect ratio can be easily changed. By default, it's uh, 16 by 9, but you can choose one of the other uh, settings here or a custom. We've got the option for poster image as well. Um, error message in case a person visiting the website doesn't have support for HTML5 audio or video. That's a pretty rare occurrence nowadays because player stack does work on all web browsers as far back as about Internet Explorer 9. Options to control how the media is preloaded. By default it's always auto but you can just set it to load metadata only or you can have no preloading whatsoever. Various options to customise if a player stack will automatically play. Uh, we've got a debug mode which is useful for troubleshooting. The option to pull in font awesome icons. You can loop the player stack so when the audio video file has finished playing it will replay itself. And we've also got the option here for a redirect so when the audio video file has finished playing you can actually redirect users onto another page or onto another website altogether. The player control bar, these are all the settings for this, we'll cover this in a bit more detail later on. Likewise for the uh, player control buttons and the text for the player stack. The scrub bar, that's this little bar in the middle which shows the current progress of the audio or video file as it's playing and will also show the rate at which the file is buffering. We've got the option for a splash button which is basically a big play button which you can display in the middle of your audio or video file and a unique feature of this stack is excellent support for text tracks in particular um, captions or subtitles and things like that so definitely lots of different settings to come in and experiment with but just for this example I'm just going to get a really simple video set up so I've already got a video file uh, hosted so I'm just going to get the public link for that so I've got the player stack here set to video and I'm just going to enter the link now for the video so we'll do the mp4 version first and I'll put in the webm version like so so that is our video file sort of embedded now aspect ratio I know that's correct so I'm going to leave that as it is and for the poster frame or the poster image I'm going to set this to a local image and I'm going to open the stacks media library and you will find that some example poster images are installed with the player stack so I'm just going to drag one of these out paste it into the well on this side like so and I think all the other settings can be left as they are so if I go and preview the page now and as you can see we've now got ourselves a very nice media play in the middle you can see the buffering bar is loading on the bottom here so this indicates that a video file has been found and is loading and I can go ahead and I can just play this video So uh, yeah, that's the basics of uh, the player stack and how it would work. You can see it's pretty straightforward and easy to get set up in a page. Um, but what we'll do now is we'll, we'll switch over and, and step things up a gear and start to customise the player stack a bit more. What we'll do is we will uh, customise the control bar at the bottom here. We'll take out some of the things we don't need and perhaps put in a few other additional features or functions.
Okay then, so we've got a basic example of a player stack set up and working really nicely. Although we've only got a video which is 32 seconds long, it's given us a really nice example to play around with and just see how the player stack would function. I'm just going to go ahead and save my project file now and we'll move on to the next phase which would be to actually customise the player controls. Now I will admit that when you first install the player stack, the player controls may seem a bit dull and uninspiring. But the truth of the matter is, is that you can radically customise the control bar in the player stack. Not only can you change what buttons are shown and what order the buttons are shown in, but you can also customise the colour scheme of the player stack to match your existing Rapid Weaver theme or your corporate branding, for example. And it is pretty straightforward to do. So firstly, in Rapid Weaver edit mode, if I double click on the control bar shown, you'll see that it turns into an HTML code box. And at this point, I can quite easily go through here and I can decide which buttons I want to take out. So in this example, I'm going to take out the replay button. So I don't want that displaying. I've confirmed that I've not got support for captions or subtitles. So I'm just going to take out that button. And while I'm at it, I think I'll take out the download button too, like so. And if I just click outside of that HTML code box, you can see that those extra buttons have now been removed and we're just left with a basic set of buttons. But what you will notice straight away is that we've got a rather sort of ugly gap over here on the right hand side. And it would be nice to try and justify the buttons and get them to spread out across the whole of the control bar. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure the player stack is selected and then scroll down in the settings down to the control buttons. So the control buttons are for things like your play, your pause, your skip forward, your skip back, um, volume and your full screen buttons, things like that. By default they've got a width of 7% applied but I can just sort of increment that up slightly to say 8%. We specify all widths in percentage units of measurement basically because player stack is a fully responsive stack element so we use sort of proportionately scaling units of measurement rather than specifying things in fixed widths like pixels. It just makes our job a lot easier and the end result is a, a, an audio video player which is going to be a lot more flexible and fit in different parts of the page more easily. The text width is for things like the current time and the, the total duration of the audio video so we'll leave that as it is. But what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to stretch what's called the scrubber bar wider. This will have a result of pushing the current time, the mute button and the full screen button further onto the right hand side here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start incrementing the width of it up higher. And we'll uh, keep going like so. And what I'm looking for is for that final full screen button to go down onto a new line like so. So at that point I know I've made the scrub bar too wide because we can't at this point now fit all the controls on the same bar. So I'm just going to reduce that down by two points like so. So that's a total width now of 43%. And if I go and preview the page, what we've got now is a very nice control bar. All the buttons are nicely spaced out, you know, evenly distributed. We've got the scrub bar in the middle still and you can just see it starting to buffer the video for us. So that's working really nicely. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just going to save those latest changes. And I think I'll have a sort of mess around the colour scheme a bit. So like I said, we've already got sort of a, a grey colour scheme, which I'll admit is not ideal, but we can quite easily brighten that up, make it more unique to our page design. First thing I'm going to do is to change the actual background of the controller bar. That can be done here using these two colour pickers. So in this instance, I'm going to change the top colour to sort of a, a dark grey. In this case, I'm going to use iron. And the bottom fill will go for black, like so. So you get this nice sort of modern gradient effect. I think I will change... Let's have a look. Let's change the colour of the scrub bar. I'll change the colour of the buffer bar to begin with. So we'll go for perhaps tin, something like that to begin with. And the actual scrub bar itself will change the colour of the handle, so we'll go for a sort of orange for the overall colour scheme. And again, by doing it 
this a two tone you get this nice gradient effect so it's not completely flat like so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this so that it's actually overlaying the poster frame or the video so I'm going to tick that option here and I think we'll apply just a few rounded corners everything looks better with rounded corners <laughs> so there we go we've got some nice little rounded corners applied and because we're overlaying it I think we'll experiment with the margin as well so I'm just going to change that to 5% margin there 5% there like so margin won't show up in uh, stacks edit mode but rest assured when we switch across into preview mode now we'll have a nice margin so there we go so this is what preview mode looks like now I did actually change the poster image a few minutes ago I put it in one of the other sample images which has got this uh, new video ribbon across the top right hand side but other than that the uh, player stack is exactly the same as before you can see the uh, video has just loaded you just saw the buffer bar go across the bottom there and we've got a very very nice control bar really smart really professional because these icons are formed using font awesome icons they are retina display compatible so if you've got a retina display mac or you're viewing this website on an iPad for example or an Android Nexus 7 tablet or something anything with a, a high DPI resolution screen these icons are always going to look really pin sharp they're not going to go all fuzzy and nasty looking like little gif or png icons sometimes do I'll just go ahead and check that the video still plays there we go and as you can see that's working really nicely and the player control bar is overlaid over the video itself Great, so that's working perfectly. I'm just going to go back now and just one last thing I'm going to uh, play around with on here. And that is I'm going to apply a splash button. So the splash button is basically this big play button which displays right in the middle of a video. You can customise its label or the text inside. So for example up here I'm just going to change this to play video. Like so. And the idea of this is just to put a, a really nice big fat button in the middle of your audio poster frame or in on top of your video. Try and encourage people to actually click and play the video. Uh, because sometimes the, the controls might not be immediately obvious to a person. So this is just a nice big open invitation for somebody to go ahead and play your content. Customise the position of this play button. It's font size, padding, borders, the whole lot really. And if I just go back and preview the page, you can see what that would look like in the middle. Another unique feature of the player stack, which sets it above all other competing solutions for Rapid Weaver, is the ability to set up custom buttons to control your video or audio file. So again, looking at the example on the website now in front of us, we could decide that we want to have a custom play button or something here in the sidebar on the right hand side something that would interact with the audio or video file on this side and because player stack has very much been built specifically for rapid weaver i have built in this functionality and this is available today as of version one of the player stack so i'll go ahead and show you how to get this set up i'm just going to switch into edit mode and i'll just switch off the existing player control bar. There's no harm in leaving the control bar turned on and having custom buttons elsewhere on the page but what you will find is that it can sometimes confuse a web browser and you might find that things like the play pause button don't automatically toggle between the different states when you've got multiple buttons on the same page so for that reason I find it's easier and safer just to turn off things like the control bar like so and if we go back and just preview the page quickly you can see now we've got our we've still got the splash button in the middle there but no control bar at the bottom so the code for custom buttons is, is fairly straightforward I have documented it in detail on the stacks for stacks website so do feel free to go along to that website and copy any of the code examples shown in essence and what I'm going to do now is just open the sidebar paste in this code for example like so and in this example I'm just going to set up a custom play pause button and we the important bit is to give it a class of play dash pause dash 
player one and this player one if you recall is the same ID that you give your player stack up here in the stack settings so I'll go and preview the page now and as you can see we've now got a little play button here and if I click on that you can see how it makes the video start playing automatically like so that works quite nicely obviously the, because that button is outside of a player stack the existing controls to style the button won't work so you'll need to use your own CSS code in this example I'm using the black and white theme it's a better Rapid Weaver theme it's got bootstrap support built in so I can add some bootstrap classes so I'm just going to type btn and then btn dash default which will give us the style of a default button I'll just go back and preview the page and as you can see you've now got a nice play button here with a, a subtle rollover effect and it works the same as it did before nice and simple so that's just an extra aspect of the player stack which other audio and video stacks for Rapid Weaver don't support it's a rather unique feature of this stack the final feature I wanted to talk about today in the new player stack is support for text tracks more commonly text tracks are referred to as captions and subtitles you've bound to have seen them on television before and they are now becoming commonplace in content published online on the internet particularly audio and video files like the ones we're dealing with in the player stack browser support for text tracks is surprisingly good all the latest versions of Opera, Firefox, Safari and Chrome support text tracks without any problems whatsoever and those browsers you'll find are fully compatible with the player stack Microsoft Internet Explorer as normal there's a few difficulties Microsoft claim that they have full support for captions and subtitles but the reality of it is that the captions only tend to display if you're playing video back through Windows Media Player rather than back through Internet Explorer and that can create a few problems and a few issues regarding sort of incompatibilities but certainly the player stack does support captions and subtitles and there are some very good genuine reasons to consider providing text tracks with your audio video files firstly there's some evidence emerging that search engines are taking a liking to supplementary content you're providing with audio or video presumably it's for the same reason that you provide alt attributes with images in that you're, you're giving the search engines extra information about that particular content type which they can't normally see or hear so search engines do appear to be taking a liking towards captioned content likewise if you're building a website the chances are you're going to have people from all over the world landing on it they might not natively speak the same language you do so therefore if you're providing captions and subtitles against your video content they've got a very nice reliable method to understand what your content is all about exactly the same as what you do on you know TV if somebody speaks in a different language you put captions up at the bottom of the screen we can do exactly the same with HTML audio and video so yeah definitely there's some good benefits to using text tracks setting up text tracks in the player stack is pretty straightforward what you want to do is in the stack settings scroll down to the bottom and switch on the enable text tracks option and we provide five I suppose you'd call them placeholders for different tracks so we've got track 1 and track 2 are normally enabled by default but you've got the option of up to five tracks so you just turn on the tracks as you need them so in this case I've turned on track 1 and you set up the link to your subtitle or caption file and I can give you an example of what one of these files looks like this is from text wrangler and we use a format called WebVTT which stands for Web Video Text Track this is a relatively new standard a new way of presenting captions and subtitles I should say but it's getting a lot of support from all the major web browser developers and other stakeholders and you basically define cues so in this case we're starting at zero and going up to four seconds into the video so you provide a queue and then you provide a, a, a caption or subtitle underneath 
So you do this for your entire audio or video file and you can control exactly when each of these captions or subtitles is displayed over the audio or video file. Fairly straightforward. Again, if you go to the website stacksforstacks.com forward slash player, I've put up a lot of information all about this and some extra links. So do feel free to go along and check out that extra information. So you need to get these files up onto the same web server that you're publishing the player stack to. And once you've done so, you can set up the link. You can, in the player settings, customize what sort of text track it is. So normally it would be a caption, but there's other options you can just, you can select here as well. The language, normally you'd have it as EN, which stands for English, but you might have captions or subtitles for other languages, in which case you would vary what this language string would say. If you are putting up multiple tracks of the same language, then I would suggest you do EN followed by dash one, like so. That basically means that every text track you're using has got a unique language code and it's going to avoid any potential problems. That's the only thing to watch out for when you're setting this up. The label is what gets shown in the text track menu. You can see here on the left hand side we've got a new option that says text tracks and it gives us a preview of what the text tracks control bar will look like. So I can just customize that, change it to let's say a description like so. And we can customize the, the off button if we want. And like with the, the main player control bar we can also customize the appearance of the text track control bar as well. And that is pretty much always to setting it up. So now if I go and preview the page we've still got the same video loaded as before and you can see the buffer bars just going across the bottom. What I've done is I've reset the control bar back to the original options which gives us this A icon and this is what turns on the text track menu where users can switch on captions or subtitles and things like that and in this instance I'm just going to click on description button and this will then load our subtitles so if I just close the caption menu again press the play button what you'll find is as a video is playing the caption file I showed you earlier the, the individual captions in that the cues are displaying as a video plays There you go, so that's just a really quick example of what captions would look like if they were applied to a video such as this one. Like I say, pretty easy to set up, but if you've got any questions, go to the website because I have put up a lot of information and additional links all about captions. Things are still a bit experimental. I mean, I have added options in the player stack to change the colour of the track, the, the, the background colour, and also the font size of the, the text displayed over your audio or video. Some web browsers understand these controls and will, you know, listen to our, our instructions and apply those different style settings. Other browsers, I've noticed like Safari, are less keen to customise things. And that's mainly because things are so experimental at this stage. So do expect things to improve slowly over time and there to be greater consistency between different web browsers. I hope this video has been of help to you anyway and has given you a good insight into what the new player stack can do. As I said at the start of the video, everything can be found for the player stack on this website which is stacksforstacks.com forward slash player. We've got a free demo version you can download. If you like what you see then you can purchase the stack directly and securely through this website. There's loads of information and documentation on this web page all about the player stack. And certainly if you've got any questions which aren't covered here on the website, then uh, feel free to get in contact with me. Uh, you can just click on the contact button, the top right of the page here, and go through and you can send me an email. Or you can contact me through other methods such as through Google Plus or through Twitter.